it is finally that time to really tackle the game that recently just won the best game of the year award at the VGAs in a game that's been getting 5 out of 5s, 4 out of 4s, 9 out of 10s, 10 out of 10s, all over the place ever since the game came out. And I was never really the person who followed a lot of hype or, you know, let alone just really played the Legend of Zelda game. Now, don't get me wrong, I played some here and there, maybe 20, 30 minutes here and there. I played a solid beginning of Ocarina of Time, and then also I got a little confused on Majora's Mask, so I never really actually got to finish, or let alone get the full experience of a Legend of Zelda game. Now, here we are today discussing the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Nintendo Switch. And if you guys have been following me on this channel, you know how much I love the Nintendo Switch! It's just been such, such a good experience on the Switch. And this actually has to be, well, technically it's the third game I've purchased, but I don't really count the first game I've ever purchased on the Nintendo Switch, which was Troll and I. And if, you, if you've ever, ever seen that game or played it, I feel so sorry for you. That game was straight booby cheeks. Technically, this is the third game I've played, and this review is not coming from somebody who is a hardcore Zelda fan that's been itching and scratching for this game to come out. Jessica. This game, to me, is, it, it was just any other game, because I've never really been a fan. I was curious, I was like, it looks like a good game, I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. So, this review is not coming from somebody who is a hardcore Zelda fan. But coming from somebody who's curious, so if you're one of those gamers out there, I highly suggest him just stay in tune because you're gonna be surprised by what I say. Let's go ahead and get started with the review. takes place 100 years after Link, the four champions, and Zelda actually thought of being called Calamity Ganon. And long story short, they all got flexed, and Link was put into this slumber, which <laughs> he awoken literally 100 years later. So everything has been wiped clean. You do not have to worry about having too much prior knowledge with this game, because as you're playing through the game, you're going to have these things called memories, and they're going to pretty much fill in the gaps of what happened a hundred years later or what happened around this time when Link and the Champions and Zelda fought the being called Calamity Ganon. So once Link is awakened, that's when your true open world story begins. That's when your journey begins, when you finally look into that big gigantic world of Hyrule and they don't really give you a really, you know, linear experience. They're just like, here's the open world, go ahead and tackle it how you feel. If you get lucky enough, you might find some good stuff along the way, right when you start, or you can actually look at the old creepy guy that's actually looking at you from a distance. You can either talk to him, or you can do whatever you want. So, you're just gonna be like, it's my world, I can do whatever I want. Oh, here's a stick! Let me go ahead and get this stick. <laughs> Not only will your weapons break, so nothing will be permanent, your weapons will break, and on top of your weapons breaking, the enemies in the dead beginning of the game, because you don't have any armor or anything, you just have the clothes that you were sleeping in for that for the 100 years, so if they hit you, they're able to one-shot you. Maybe two-shot you, and if you jump off a really high cliff, you're going to end up dying. So this game teaches you through, okay, if you want to just go ahead and do whatever you want, you kind of want to have to talk to the old guy and see what's going on. So when you talk to the old man, he's going to pretty much run you through a couple trials here and there, and then he's going to take you to these things called shrines. And these shrines are going to be a key point into the gameplay, which these shrines have these little puzzles in the game. So when you actually scan your Sheikah Slate or put your Sheikah Slate on the tablet thing, you're actually going to get sent down to this underworld puzzle area where you're going to have to solve whatever it is they have in front of you and you're going to be able to get a nice little nifty prize called a soul orb which is going to be exchanged if you get four you can actually either get a heart container or you can get a stamina vessel so you're going to need those and then just a little pointer here right now when you do play the game and you want to get that master sword which is links best sword you can get in the game. If you guys want to get that, you have to have 13 hearts in order for you to get that sword. Not going to tell you exactly where it's at, but you're, the Master Sword is definitely in that game, but you're going to need 13 hearts for it. So, it is very key that you find as many shrines as you can and you complete them. Don't try to go a full stamina build. It's really 
the stamina builds good when you're actually taking care of, you know, climbing mountains and, you know, swimming or paragliding throughout the map is going to be really helpful. But if you want to get that Master Sword, you're going to have to stack up on hearts. So you can pretty much play however you want to play in this game, which is actually pretty good. Oh, and one more thing. Don't think you got the juice just because you breeze all through those shrine puzzles because once you get to certain areas on the map, they get ridiculously hard. So prepare them buns, boy. Remember when I said this is an open world game? Yeah, the, the map is just ridiculously hooed, man. So whenever you see any of those uh, orange towers uh, sticking up anywhere, make sure you climb up those boys and you activate it with your Sheikah Slate, which is going to actually open up a certain area on your map so you can actually see it. So when you first start out in the game, you can only see that little portion of Hyrule. You can't see everything else around you. So when you're doing that, the tutorial is going to really get you in the groove of that mechanic. But make sure whenever you see a tower, I don't care if you're in the middle of a main quest or, you know, or mainly side quests, because in the main quest you're not really going to run into them as much, because they're going to kind of keep you in one, one area most of the time. But when you're in a side quest or anything like that, or you're just exploring, make sure you activate those towers, because it's going to give you that extra vision, and it's going to just make the game just that much more fun. They're pretty fun to do, man. So Breath of the Wild actually has really fluid combat. Usually in some games it can be a little over the top. Some games it cannot really have, you know, too much depth behind it at all. But for some reason, Breath of the Wild merges simplicity with a little bit of depth. And they merge the two together. Don't get me wrong, Zelda does not have... Oh my god. I'm turning it down! So like I said, Link actually has certain mechanics in the game where he can actually get something called a fury rush so if you actually dodge a uh, move perfectly if you time your dodges right you get this slow-mo attack which you can just whack the enemy as many times as you can until that timer runs out and not only that but the fact that the game actually has you know the combat to where it's really simple to learn and just get a grasp of but once you fight enemies like a lino which is a freaking lion centaur thing. Once you actually fight one of those and you kind of learn its attack patterns and learn what it's weak to, because certain enemies are going to have weaknesses, and you just learn how to just combine all those elements together. So if you're timing all your dodges nicely, you're going to be able to get that fury rush. It adds this kind of level of skill to it. So if you're able to just land your parries beautifully, you can actually stun your enemy. Like something crazy, not just, you know, not avoid the hit, but you can actually stun your enemy. And it just adds a level of flash to it where it's not overdoing it because some games add way too much flash and then once you start playing the game and you kind of realize that that's it, it just wants to be flashy but not have too much depth, that's when the game can get a little repetitive. But this game, as much as the combat is simple, it has depth to it. So if you're an advanced player and you learn all these mechanics, you can create some of the nastiest combos and nastiest plays you've ever seen in your life. The combat is literally that good, man. So like I said, the game doesn't have too much flash, doesn't have, you know, it doesn't make it overcomplicated. It makes it to where it's simple, but it has depth at the same time. So for that fact, the combat, it, it just makes it work. It's just right. It doesn't have too much flash, doesn't have too much, you know, too much depth, too much this, too much that. It has just enough to make it an enjoyable experience. I was actually surprised that this game had a, a lot of challenge to it, not only when it came to the puzzles. But when it came down to either the boss fights or just the combat in general. So if you thought you just because you handle a regular Lionel okay, just because of that doesn't mean when you go and fight a silver Lionel, don't mean you can just mess around and think you can just do whatever. No, you have to make sure because they're going to fight different. So instead of regular Lionel shooting one fireball and, you know, doing one swipe, this one can end up swiping you five times and then shooting like eight fireballs at you. You have no idea. So it really encourages players to actually pay attention and it keeps them engaged the whole time. And then, I can't lie, boss fights and mini boss fights are just insanely epic with the music that plays in the background. Now one thing people really think when they hear about an open world game is they think of being overwhelmed. And I can understand that. When I actually played Ghost Recon Wildlands for the first time, I'm not gonna lie, I did feel overwhelmed, mainly at the point of it just so many things pop up at one time and they take so much time to do, or not even that they take so much time to do, but it just, it steers you off 
way too often. So you can get distracted, and then they make it seem like whatever it is that's distracting you is so much more important than your main mission. With Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you don't actually have to worry about that. When you're actually just exploring throughout the world, they make it to where it's like, hey, you know, we got Calamity Ganon over there. You can fight him if you want to. But we highly suggest you actually make sure you take care of all the other divine beasts that are there, which are pretty much the temples in the game, like your water temple, wind temple, and fire temple, so on and so forth. So, when I saw side quests, like, around, it was never like, hey, hey, side quests over here, boy! It was just like the side quests were there. It never felt like it was just the extreme urgency to do. And then the world just gave you so much to do, it never felt like, you really had nothing to do. You can do as much in this game as you can with just about any other open world game. So it never felt like these side quests were just of extreme urgency to do. It, and then even if you did do them, you got a really good reward from it. It was never just to do just because of, eh, get some points to this here and there. You actually got some stuff that benefited you in the long run. So when you're actually doing stuff like that, it never felt like I just got pulled away way too many times. I was actually able to stay on track, and if I wanted to go out and just get a bunch of shrines and get, you know, beefed up, I can do that. But it never felt like I was just being rushed to do certain things. So they actually balanced that out pretty nicely, and then, like I said, the stuff you actually get from doing side quests, main quests, or just exploring, you get a lot of great stuff, so everything just benefits the player. So they actually did that pretty nicely. But the one thing, like I said, that's really important is when you play an open world game and you feel overwhelmed, it really can take away from the experience for you. So with that being said, this game did a really good job actually balancing that out and making it sh making it pretty clear that you have to stay on track and you gotta make sure you take care of these divine beasts so you can actually fight that man Calamity again. So after experiencing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the first time and not being a Legend of Zelda fan, not having all the prior knowledge and anything of that matter, I can honestly say this game turned me into a fan I cannot wait for more DLC to come, and I can't wait for them to bring a new game whenever it is that they're gonna, whatever they're gonna bring up. I can't wait. They can take as much time as they need because this game was just, it was phenomenal. I, I could not find one thing that made the experience just terrible. I couldn't find anything. My experience playing this game from start to finish was a good one. If I died by an enemy, it was my fault. I never felt cheated. I just had to pay attention. That's it. Learn from my mistakes. It was never to where I was like, that boss is cheating. Or, this mechanic is busted. Not once. Not one time. So for that fact, I would have to give this game a solid 5 out of 5. And don't think that I'm saying this game is flawless. Your playthrough can be different than mine. But what I'm saying to you is why I'm giving it that 5 out of 5 is because my experience was just flawless. There was no hype behind this game that encouraged me. There was nothing that encouraged me to give it that score besides the fact that I just could not find anything that I did not like. Nothing. I've never really gotten into a Legend of Zelda game, let alone beat one. This is the first one. This one is the first one I've really dived into. And I couldn't be happier. I really couldn't. So I highly, highly recommend anyone, if you have a Nintendo Switch or Wii U, Pick this game up, and if you're actually going to purchase a Nintendo Switch for the first time, which I actually got to let you guys know, we got Payday 2 coming, there's Doom already on the Switch that I reviewed that you can check that out, and you got Wolfenstein 2 coming, Bayonetta 1 and 2 coming, and Bayonetta 3, and Metro Choir 4, there are so many games coming onto the Switch, if you guys want to get on that Switch craze, now is the perfect time, get it while you can, if you get one, make sure you pick this game up. Make sure. If you want that nice open world experience, pick this game up. If you want something quick to where you can just get a nice FPS, get Doom. Or if you want to bust some heads in 2K, get 2K. Either way, the Switch has a lot to offer right now. So with that being said, guys, I would like to end this review off. Like I said, solid 5 out of 5. Make sure you pick up Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild if you haven't. That's all I got to say about this review. So if you guys have any comments, make sure you leave them down below. I highly encourage feedback. And if you enjoyed this video, hit it with that thumbs up because it will help your boy out. So this is your boy QKG. And peace out.